welcome to worship this morning. Please rise and join us for Our God Saves. gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God in three expressions, who is both close enough to us to be considered a father, brother, counselor, and so magnificent that we cannot fully wrap our minds around who God is. Trusting in this infinite yet lovingly close Lord of heaven and earth, let us pause to confess all that weighs on our spirits and all, our, all of our burdens. Holy God, we know that you are always there to lead us, yet we somehow lose our way and fall back into fear. We question your ways when they are different from our ways in the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings. Turn us again to you that we may follow you and walk in your ways. Amen. Hear the good news. God has claimed us as his children through our baptism into Christ. Christ has washed away our sin and set us free by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in God's grace and love. Amen.
and sent your spirit that your love might abide within us. Teach us how to love each other this day, that we may have life and have it abundantly with you in Christ and through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be seated. Welcome to worship. There are many announcements in the bulletin this morning to draw your attention to. Here are some to make sure to note. Next Sunday, if you come to church at 1030, bummer. Because you'll be late for the potluck that starts at 930. And you'll be very early for church that starts at 11. So, show up at 930 for the potluck brunch. And then plan on worshiping at 11 a.m. with the entire Nebraska Synod. It will be live streamed from the Synod Assembly. And I don't know, it's a silly thing to pray for, but you know, if you feel like praying for random strange things, I'd say pray that the internet doesn't blow up next Sunday for the fun of it, right? Because it'll be cool to worship with the whole Nebraska Synod. But if it does, no worries. We will worship with or without the internet because we have a backup plan, okay? So, um, so come, 9.30 brunch, 11 o'clock worship. Um, also, if you'll note in the bulletin, we have a, an opening on our staff at American Lutheran. We are looking for an office administrator. Um, Sherry, who is our present office administrator, gave us notice this week. Um, and it's bittersweet because um, she has been a joy to work with in this congregation. And she's a joy to um, walk into the office. And she, she, greets with the, she greets you with a smile. And she comes in early when it's necessary. And um, yes, anyways... Um, she has decided to take a job at LPS as a registrar, and it's um, exciting for her because her husband gets to retire, and so now they need her to carry health insurance, and our job doesn't include health insurance. So, um, so it will provide well for her family, but it will mean that we are looking for an office administrator and that we don't get to have Sherry on our staff anymore. So keep her in your prayers. If you have time, make sure to drop her a note or bring a phone call or drop by and just tell her how much she's been appreciated. And, um, and if you know of anybody who'd be interested in office administrator work, um, our posting is going to be on, in Inde on Indeed.com. And check out our website. Okay. Um, also, we're in the process of rekeying the church. The plan is for that to start on June 3rd. So if you have a key, um, it won't work after June 5th, and we'll be getting you new keys. The goal is to keep track of where all the keys are at and who has them, because right now there's a whole bunch floating around in the world, and yeah, our security's never been very tight at American Lutheran, but, <laughs> but we're going to attempt to maybe not tighten security as much as just know what's going on. So um, anyways, that's happening. If you show up on June 5th and your key doesn't work, Come and talk to us, and we'll get you a new one, okay? Um, let's see. Last, uh, I think those are my announcements today. Any others that we need to note? note? Okay, prayers. There's a lot of prayer requests today. So, um, Gina is Lisa Spilker's mom. She's currently in hospice, so keep her in your prayers. Um, Lois... Um, Yes, thank you. My brain sometimes. <laughs> I see, yeah, my brain. Lois Kern has decided that she's, it's time to stop driving. But you all know how much Lois loves this place, and she lives too far away to, like, for transportation. So we're looking for rides for Lois, and if you're willing and have time, please let um, me know, or even better, just call Lois and offer the ride. That would help a lot. And if you want more, Sarah Graff, you can call her as well. Um, but in the meantime, keep Lois in your prayers. And if there's ways to help her get places, please reach out to her and offer that. Um, Jim Farver, Jim Farver, who many of us have known and loved for a long time, passed away yesterday. He's been on hospice, and I've been visiting him, and it was good and peaceful rest. And it's good, but, but, anyways, we do not know when the funeral will be. Some of his kids live quite a ways away from town, um, and he was very, very, very active in the Wahoo community. Probably you all know that, but 
Um, so I'm not even sure that it will be at American because he had a church before he came here and that community knows and loves him too. But as soon as I find out when the service is, I will make sure to let everybody know. But keep Jim's family in your prayers. Um, Gladys Schaefer had hip surgery and is doing better. Um, and, and, um, huh? Jersey Franson's family. She, Judy passed away this week as well. I'm sorry, my list is too long. I should have written it all down. Um, so keep Judy's family in your prayers and the, um, and the Sielemeyer family. And then, um, um, hmm. David Minnie had surgery also this week and is back home doing better. So lots to keep in prayers, lots. Um, but God is good and holds us through all of the storms. So reach out and, and share love and that know that that helps a bunch. Okay, others in prayers this morning? Then let's continue with our worship. We read the scripture and we hear God's word for our lives today. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts, then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> the second reading is from Romans chapter 8. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Please rise as you're able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John chapter 3. Now there were Pharisee, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of flesh is flesh, what is born of spirit is spirit. 
Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you. We speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses was lifted up by the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and I invite our young people forward for a children's message today. Come on over, you gotta see this. You're sitting so far away from me. Scooch up. Andrew, come on. Today is a weird Sunday. Today is Holy Trinity Sunday. Most Sundays we talk about a Bible passage, one Bible passage, and we reflect on it. And, but today, today is the day when we focus on who is God and what does God look like. And I think it's a really hard Sunday because because people have tried to answer that question for forever. And every time they try, they get part of the answer wrong. Because our brains are kind of small when it comes to when it comes to thinking about who God is. And God's brain is so much bigger. God is so much bigger than us. Our brains can't quite contain it all. But today, we worship God in Trinity, which basically means that God is so big that we can't think about God in only one way. God is so big that he chooses to be with us in way more than one way all the time. So God is with us as the creator or the father who creates everything. God is with us as the son who dies for us and who rises for us and who's with us on earth and who gives us the promise of eternal life in heaven. And God is with us in spirit, right in the midst of our hearts, blowing through our lives every day. Okay, so how many gods do we worship? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Susie says one. One God. But didn't I just name three? That's Trinity. We worship one God, but we, but we know about God in at least three different ways. Okay? So how does that work? We were talking about this, and this is my favorite example. The problem is, is that even this example falls a little short. Okay? But here, how many apples do I have? One. There's only one apple here. But within the apple, there's different parts. Right? So in the, within the apple... You got the peel. What's the purpose of the peel? What's it do? Keeps the inside clean. It's got the most nutrients. Who likes to eat the peel the best? It's the best part of the apple for you to eat, though. What else is cool about the apple? What's it do? It protects the apple from everything on the outside. And it's pretty, isn't it? If you're a bird and you see this apple on the tree, you go, oh, a pretty apple. I think I'll eat it, right? And then the bird eats all the way through the apple, gets to the seed, and then you know what happens? It poops out the seed. And then you know what happens? 
a tree grows. So you see the skin, the peel, really an important part, right? Then in the inside, there's meat, the fleshy part of the apple. That's my favorite part to eat. Who likes to eat that part? Yeah, because it's yummy and it's sweet, right? You know what? If this apple falls to the earth, it is the part that like attracts people to the apple. It's also the part that like is the sweetness that helps things grow. It's like nutrients, okay? And then in the very center is the seeds. See all those little seeds? What will they do? You plant them. You don't even have to plant them. Sometimes the birds plant them. Sometimes they just fall to the earth and they start growing right where they fall, right? But these little seeds, they're the smallest part, but here's the thing. They're the smallest part, but they make sure that more and more and more and more and more apples will grow and that the plant will continue to live forever. Forever. That's the purpose of the seed, right? So how many apples do I got? One apple. But within the apple, three different things that help, right? God is like that. God is one God. But God loves you so much that God's not okay with just creating you. God loves you so much that he creates you. God loves you so much that he protects you. God loves you so much that he's like a brother to you. God loves you so much that he dies for you so that you're never alone. God loves you so much that he's with you wherever you go. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. At least three different ways we know God. But how many gods? Just one. And it's a mighty hard thing. We'll never understand it all. But that's okay. Because God loves us so much that we don't have to understand all there is to know about God. We're just asked to trust him. Let's pray. Gracious yeah. God, thank you for loving us even when we don't understand it all. Amen. Thank you. Take some candy and head back. Yay. Anybody want some apple? All right. A little apple? Mm. Want some apple, Gabe? No? I'm having some candy. You're welcome. Here, Parker. Here's a little apple. <laughs> Ab, I belong to you. I belong to you. Abba, Father, Abba, I belong to you. I belong to you. Abba, Father, God. I kneel now and feel how I felt here before. This pausing is causing my heart to explore. Why, when I'm worried so often, you seem far away. Still, I will say, Abba, I belong to you. I belong to you. Abba, Father, Abba, I belong to you. I belong to you. Abba, Father, God. What I feel is less real than all that you say. You told me you'd hold me through all of my days. So though my spirit is tossing and turning about, still there's no doubt. Abba, I belong to you, I belong to you. Abba, Father, Abba, I belong to you, I belong 
unto you, Abba, Father God. Grace and peace to you this day from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's Holy Trinity Sunday, in my opinion. This is the Sunday of the church year that is hardest to wrap our heads around. Because we talk about God and about who God is. And every time we try to explain or define God in some way, always we fall short. Even scripture has a really hard time nailing down the entire image of who God is. You got to read all of it. And even then, even then, it's awfully hard to contain who God is exactly. Did you listen to the images that our scripture passages throw out? The first one comes from Isaiah. Isaiah experiences God in the temple. Imagine the scene. Isaiah walks into the temple and he sees God and God is so big that God's hem fills up the entire temple, the hem of his robe. I tried to look for a picture of what that would be like. And in my opinion, every picture falls short. Because seriously, imagine how this would have looked and felt. The temple at the time was the grandest building by far in Jerusalem. It was built to be the place where God would dwell on earth. And arguably, it may have been the best building of its time. It was huge. It was built up on top of a hill. You could see it from a long ways off, and you especially saw it from a long ways off because the center of it, the Holy of Holies, was plated in gold. So up on the hill, the sun caught it, and it shined for a very long ways. Can you see it? When people saw this from a far way off, they felt like God was grand. So put yourself in Isaiah's shoes for a moment and walk into the temple and see the grandest thing that your brain can imagine. Filled with God. And God is so big, so big, that all that you see of God in the temple is just the hem of his robe. And on top of it, the creatures that surround God sing and fly and praise the Lord with such power that the entire temple shakes. Imagine it. That's the power of God. And Isaiah stands there and realizes just how little he is. An ant. Nothing. In, in material. What is Isaiah in the presence of the Lord? Nothingness. And Isaiah says, woe is me. For I am nothing. I'm lost. I'm a sinful person, and I live amongst a sinful people. Who am I that I am standing in the presence of this great and powerful God? Isaiah is no more than the average ant. None of us are. And yet, here's the amazing thing. This amazing, awesome, powerful, so big, the temple only holds the hem of his robe, God. Loves Isaiah enough to talk to him. Loves Isaiah enough to forgive and blot out Isaiah's sins. And loves Isaiah enough to say, you do matter. And I have a calling for you. Go to your people and speak my word. So Isaiah does. That's one image of God, bigger than our imaginations can hold. That's who God is. But then we jump to the gospel, and we talk to Nicodemus, or we talk with Nicodemus for a while, and Nicodemus comes to Jesus, who doesn't look quite so big, is that big, but doesn't look so big. 
and says to Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Nicodemus is a church person. He's a church leader. He cares very much about his faith, but he's looking for a checklist, don't you think? Whenever I hear Nicodemus ask this question, that's what I think he's looking for. He's looking to make sure that he's dotted the I's and crossed the T's and will inherit eternal life in the end. What must I do? I want the list. It's like when I, go to, when I went to college and I'd walk into class the first day and I would hold on to that syllabus because the syllabus would tell me all the things that I needed to do. If I checked them all off and I did them well, I'd get an A in the class. Easy peasy. Just do the work. Nicodemus says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Because Nicodemus is a control freak just like I am. He wants to be in charge. If I do the right things, then I get God. But God, but Jesus says, God says, it's not like that. You can't check the boxes. That's not how it works. I want a relationship with you. It's going to be a relationship. You must be born of water and spirit. You must be born from above. So much for the checklist. Nicodemus says, really? How can I do that? Because let's be honest, how many of us controlled our birth in this world? No, none of us choose that. When we are a baby, we do not choose to be born. It is not our job that gets this done. It's not the mom's job. She doesn't choose. If she did, it'd be a much more organized world, I'm sure of it. And it's not even the doctor's job, because the doctors think that they're in charge, but really, that baby does what that baby will do. The doctor helps in all kinds of ways and is worth listening to, but there's a whole bunch that is completely outside of our control in that whole process. That's what Jesus is getting at. We're not in control. And as much as we'd like to have the answers and think that we're in control, we can't be. It's about a relationship. A relationship where God will be in charge. And it's about a relationship where we get to be children. And we lack a whole bunch of control and we'll never fully be able to wrap our minds around it. Not really. So there's Nicodemus. And then we go to Romans and Paul says, you have not been given a spirit to fall back into fear and to be slaves to this world. You have been adopted as children of God. So live as children of God. It's a beautiful image when you think about it. I've been stuck this week, really thinking about this thing about being children of God. This week has involved an awful lot of adulting, in my opinion. It's my word, adulting. Do you ever feel like you struggle with adulting? I mean, here I am, when I was 20, I thought adulting was hard. And I thought I'd outgrow it. I really did. I thought that I would outgrow the struggle of adulting. But now I'm like 48 and I still struggle with adulting sometimes. And here's what I've been thinking about. I've been thinking about how when things break in your life and when loved ones are hurting and when the world changes because, you know, the schedule changes, and all of the things that go along with adulting become eh, rocky. I sleep less at night. But I was thinking that, really, I'm not the only one living through this ups and downs thing. Every single person in my household is living through it. My kids are living through it the same as I am. They deal with the dishwasher that doesn't work and the car that breaks down and doesn't quite get them to where they're supposed to go and the loved ones that are struggling and hurting and dying. They deal with all of those things the same as I do. They live in the same bubble as me. But at the end of the day, I think my kids in general sleep better than I do. And I was thinking about why that was. And here's what I think it is. I think it's that at the end of the day, 
my kids know that I'm going to take care of it to the best of my ability. And that they're not alone in this thing that's going on in the world. At the end of the day, the dishwasher might not work, but the dishes will somehow get done. At the end of the day, the car might leave us high and dry, but we'll somehow get home, because I'll figure it out. At the end of the day, I might be the last parent to pull up to the school to pick them up. Happens more than it should, probably. But somebody will be there to pick them up. At the end of the day, supper might not be at the table until really late at night, but there will be supper on the table. And when they wake up in the morning, breakfast will be there. It might only be cereal or Pop-Tart or something, but breakfast will be there. And then we'll go through the whole thing again. And I'll tuck them into bed. And the next day, we'll go through it all again. And the world will not be perfect, because it never is for any of us. There are big, big, big hiccups through the whole process all the time. And life throws us curveballs and unexpected and leaves us gasping for air. And all of us go through it. All of us do. But I think children sleep better in a perfect world. Because in a perfect world, children know that they're not in charge and that somebody loves them and will take care of them. That's the image that God gives us today. And here's the reason that it doesn't work. Holy Trinity has problems, right? The reason is we can all think of a child who will go to bed and not sleep very well because they don't know what the next day is going to bring and they don't know if somebody will pick them up from school and they don't know if there'll be breakfast in the morning. All of those things, we all know children who will hurt like that. That's because we're human and we really screw things up a lot of times. We are not the best adults in the whole world in any shape or form, right? But God says, get over it. You're not adults. You are children. And you're my children, not just anybody's children. You belong to me. And I promise I will never leave you. Never. I love you so much that when the entire world erupts and blows up and chaos ensues, and you think life as you know it will end forever, because it will someday, even then, I will be with you and will not let you go. Even then, I will be by your side and lead you through it. And you can rest Secure in my arms, because the next day we will rise together. We belong to the Lord. It's Holy Trinity Sunday, and we can come up with a million different images for who God is and what God is and how God works in the world, and all of them will fall short in one way or another. We're not called to figure it all out. Instead, we are called to trust. Trust that God truly does love us. And then to share that amazing love with everyone. Because Lord knows we all need it. If you want to, sing with me. Abba, I belong to you, I belong to you. Abba, Father, Abba, I belong to you, I belong to you. Abba, Father, God. Amen.
I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
triune God, to pray for our communities, ourselves and our world. Abba God, you have brought us into your family, claiming us as beloved children. Bless your family of faith with gifts of cooperation and graciousness. Increase our hospitality toward all expressions of faith and teach us to honor our shared humanity. Your love and power burst forth in the flashes of lightning, the dance of the wind, and the deeply rooted trees in the forest. Sustain fragile and interconnected ecosystems that they flourish for generations to come. Shelter those who have lost homes, businesses, and loved ones to the violent rushing winds and storms of the spring. Give your blessing of peace to the nations. Shelter all who risk life and livelihood to protect others from violence, conflict, and injustice. On this Memorial Day weekend, we remember those who have lost their lives in war and conflict, and those who are currently serving our country, especially those we lift up in the thoughts of our hearts. You are a God of love and not of condemnation. Quiet the hearts of all who struggle with shame, regret, or questions of self-worth. Teach us to forgive ourselves and one another. Restore wholeness to all who seek hope and healing. Gracious God, families come in all shapes and sizes. Sometimes families are tied together by genetics. Others are formed by adoption. Through the choices and promises we make, enfold, strength, and encourage us. Guide all families that grow, that growth may be healthy, and flourish and love may abound. Grant gifts of nurture and patience to all caregivers. Gracious Lord, we remember all those who have died and gone before us. Remind us of the good things they taught us, even when we grieve their death. Comfort us with the promise of eternal life and the presence of your Holy Spirit, and encourage us as we continue to live, grow, and serve as children of God. All this we pray in the name of the one who was, and who is, and who is to come, the Almighty. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. let us pray. Holy God, your love overflows in the gift of your spirit. Bless these gifts that we offer, that they may be spread, that they may spread your blessing in a world of hurt and need. In Christ's name, amen. We are invited to this table 
And here we are fed as God's children with all that we need for each day. That the very presence of God dwells with us. Come to this table and experience God's grace and love and forgiveness. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The meal is ready, and all are welcome at this table. Please come forward as the ushers give instructions.
please rise as you're able and receive this blessing. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you forever in his grace and love. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have reached, receive, we have received your, from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In, the name, in your name we pray. Amen. We are sent out to love and serve God with our lives. We go with God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.